Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different, but still in the realm of laptops. And that is, of course, game controllers. So the game controller that I have on the table for you today is from GameSir. And they sent this to me for the purposes of producing this video. However, I'm not being financially compensated and my opinions and reviews remain my own. And this is their G7HE wired controller for Xbox. Now, it'll cover all sorts of other things, Xbox being one of them. More importantly, this is pretty much the controller that the PC gaming industry is standardized on and that has Steam uh, has standardized on. So while it's not necessarily my favorite uh, button configuration layout, it is the one that the industry has more or less decided, hey, we have to pick a standard, uh, and they picked the one by Microsoft. Now, there's a lot going on with this controller. Uh, instead of using standard sticks and buttons, there's uh, some hall sensors. And if you watch this channel and you've looked at the keyboard videos, you know that I do have a soft spot for hall sensors because they wear uh, significantly better. We're talking about 5 million operations over their lifespan. And they usually give a much smoother and better experience. And to compare this to, I have a Xbox uh, controller here that I purchased a long time ago from when I was doing some game development projects and I needed this plugged into my PC to make sure that button configurations were working uh, appropriately and adequately. So this is a pretty well-worn controller. It's seen a lot of use. Uh, however, uh, I should also mention that this does uh, occasionally give me stick drift, which hopefully this one won't. And yeah, we'll just be using it uh, for me to compare uh, a couple of things to button presses, how they feel, uh, stick movement, how that feels. Um, but this is obviously a pretty well used controller and this one's brand new, so we do need to keep that bias in mind. So let's go ahead and unbox this. We just have to uh, slip some tape here at the back. All right, so there's the controller. It has a different shape and profile already. I can tell that right from the get go. And they have added these two additional buttons here at the bottom, which are programmable. They're called R4 and L4. We have a microphone button and three and a half uh, millimeter headphone jack located at the bottom. And yeah, right out of the box, those sticks, like it's so exceptionally smooth. Um, we've got some textured gripping going on here. It would be interesting to see how long that lasts. Uh, especially with being in high wear points. I imagine you're going to want to clean that pretty frequently. The triggers here uh, are also supposed to have uh, hall sensors built in. They feel pretty smooth. I'm just going to bring over this one for comparison. Yeah, you can even hear the difference. The first one there, obviously, <laughs> being the uh, original controller that I have. The, the buttons are a completely different feel than the original. Like there's, there's a clear breaking point uh, of the press. This one is a lot more subtle. You, I feel like you could be a bit more precise. Um, not sure if that's the right word, but there's definitely a point where you, you know for sure you've hit it. This is push, 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 and then the button gives away. So lots to like there. We do have some pictograms on the D-pad. The D-pad is very stiff. Um, there's practically minimal movement compared to the D-pad on the original, which rocks and sways around. I imagine this would either be something that you would love or hate, depending on the game that you're playing. If you need that kind of swoop input, you'll get it. If you need the more precise input, you'll definitely get it there. Uh, top triggers um, feel pretty standard. They have a much more uh, subtle sound to them. But uh, yeah, overall, feels pretty good so far. It feels quite robust too. Like I'm not worried about, um, you know, that moment where you're killed because <laughs> you were too slow and going, ah, impacting the structural integrity of the controller. Because let's be real, uh, controllers are pretty heavily abused devices sometimes. Really quickly, I'm gonna see what's inside here. Uh, it looks like there's a QC sticker, uh, a thank you, 
with an invite to join the Discord community. We've got a sticker. Uh, this one came with a Game Pass Ultimate redeem code. I don't know if that's in all of them. So, And then we have what can only be described as a pretty comprehensive multilingual uh, chart of the functionality and uh, button configuration. It tells you how to connect it. This is a wired controller, pretty straightforward there. Shows you volume control, uh, back button settings, device layout, all that good stuff. So that's all well and good, but we need to see what does it feel like to use this thing. So to do the testing, I'm going to pull down the Legion Go here, which I know I haven't featured on the channel yet because I'm doing some pretty comprehensive testing of this thing. Uh, spoiler alert, it's a great piece of kit. I'm picking a game I haven't played in a while to test this out. And it's one that I've got a, a fair bit of trigger time with the uh, original 360 controller. And that is CrossCode. So CrossCode, you could play with the mouse or a keyboard. Uh, however, I played a lot of this game using the original uh, Xbox controller. But the problem I had with it is stick drift was a huge uh, negative factor. So movement feels really good. You don't need to go to the edge uh, to get that full speed. Let's see how combat feels. Yep, about what you'd expect. I'm not used to a stick that smooth. <laughs> so a couple things just to finish up the video today. One is, of course, the software package that comes with it. It has a series of different profiles that you can configure. You can also increase the pulling rate of the controller to 250, 500 hertz to 1000, although if you hit 1000, the microphone jack doesn't work. I'm going to guess that has something to do with interference. And then if you go into any of these configurations, you can dial in the mapping of the buttons. You can decide the min-max range of the sticks, which is pretty handy. You can also just kind of see uh, what sort of performance you get out of those. You can do the same thing for the triggers, all the way from 0 to 255 on both the left and right. And you can also set them to hair trigger as well. And then the vibration settings are uh, pretty comprehensive. So there are vibration motors in the triggers and in the grips. So you can kind of customize the feel however you like. If you don't want it in the triggers, uh, you can disable that. If you don't want it in the grip, you can disable that as well. And uh, it feels pretty good. If I was doing a racing game, I would imagine that this would feel um, pretty nice. And the last thing that I should probably point out is that these face plates apparently are magnetic and they pull off. So if you wanted to customize it or swap them out, uh, you can absolutely do that. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, there is an awful lot to like uh, on a controller like this. Uh, they do retail for about 70 Canadian dollars, but I've seen them on sale for less than that. And I would say that if I were going out to replace my Xbox controller, I would very, very strongly consider this, especially for PC gaming. I don't know if you can configure the same uh, settings and details if it's on an actual console, but in terms of PC, I don't mind that at all. I actually uh, warmed up very much to the uh, sensitivity of these buttons when I was testing out CrossCode. That felt really nice. Uh, it really did feel nice. Um, I haven't programmed these bottom buttons uh, don't know if I ever will. I'm pretty used to them not being there. But overall, I have to say, for a company that seems to just specialize in Xbox controller formats, I think they've done a pretty good job. If you have any questions, make sure you're leaving them in the uh, comment section down below, and I'll leave some links in the description if you're looking to acquire one of these for yourself to try out. Like I said, I'm pretty pleased with it, not being a huge fan of the Xbox controller format, but this is, uh, in my mind, um, a marked improvement over the original. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.